evening to the parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, friends, other relatives of the extraordinary class of 2015. If it weren't for some of the folks sitting on the platform, I would tell you, you were Rice's best class ever. As president of the university, I have a limited number of responsibilities. One of them is to deliver good weather for commencement. <laughs> it looks like I'm going to bat about 50% on that one. So you can think, how would you have done in a class if you got 50% of the questions right? Behind me on the platform are some of Rice's current and past trustees. The Board of Trustees meets next week, and I'm worried. <laughs> but I know that rain cannot dampen the spirits of joy on this occasion. We are optimistic that tomorrow we will convene in the academic quadrangle. We do have one piece of advice. Do not, do not wear your favorite shoes. Wear a pair of expendable shoes tomorrow to graduation. Now, one of the advantages of our new evening ceremony, and this is just the second year that we have held it, is that we now can formulate our remarks to speak directly to our undergraduates. And indeed, as you have already heard, hear from your classmates. Now, Dennis, bravely assumed that I had not always expected to be president of Rice. <laughs> Actually, growing up in the Northeast, I knew I wanted to be president of Rice. I just didn't know where it was and ended up going in the wrong direction. But I am thrilled to be here with you tonight to celebrate your graduation from truly an extraordinary institution. Now, like Dennis, I had started out aspiring to rival what we expect will be tomorrow's wonderful remarks from General Colin Powell. Now I'm just aspiring to rival Dennis's remarks. Now, it's said that one of the extraordinary characteristics of commencement speeches is that they are forgettable and indeed forgotten, although I doubt that will be tomorrow's case. But that applies, of course, even with more force to matriculation remarks, although I was surprised that Dennis actually remembered some of what I said. But as you no doubt don't recall, I did offer advice at the matriculation ceremony three or four or five years ago, concluding with these words. Use this opportunity wisely, pursue your passions, explore the world, remember birthdays, learn from others, take responsibility, be bold, and yes, don't be an idiot. Those words had particular meaning in the context of the speech that night on that hot 90 plus degree mid-August night. And I hope you have followed that good advice in the years since, especially that part about not being an idiot. I also spoke that day to your parents or others who brought you here, who I assume are also here with you today. And I told them, we will return your child changed. Perhaps even changed in ways you don't like. I also told them that wasn't our fault or their fault. I hope that you, our students, and indeed your families, who we now regard as our families, are satisfied both with the experience and the changes. I suspect you have all changed, and in fact, 
you have changed rice. Yesterday, as you just heard, we announced the largest single gift in nominal dollars in Rice's history, a gift for leadership. And tomorrow you will hear from General Colin Powell, one of the country's most iconic leaders on the subject of leadership. But your class is already full of leaders and full of promise. Your class, by every measure available to us, shows the promise of leadership and impact on the world. I wish today that I could take the time to talk with and about every one of you. Each of you has your story. Now, recently, 14 of you were profiled in videos on our website. And I took the time the other night to watch those videos. I want to read the names of those students and not so much because they are different from the rest of you, but because I think in that respect and their experiences, they are like each of you. Casey Clark, Robbie Sheff, Sophie Hu, David Nickel, Reed Thornburg. Got to pause there because this is my last chance for revenge on the back page. <laughs> Brian Nordstrom, Anastasia Bolshakov, Petra Constable, D Denise Haklar, Trent Navron, Jason Carter, Dante Zakidov, Chelsea Sharp and Alberto Rodriguez. These are students who have come to Rice from all over the country and indeed all over the world. Students who have changed not only themselves, but their classmates and Rice. Students who have led and students who have followed. Students who have made contributions ranging from discovering how many bowls you can fit in a student room to starting a mariachi band. And when I tweeted recently about these videos, our extraordinary videographer who made them, Brandon Martin, replied simply, so many more stories that I couldn't get to. Every single one of you now carries your rice story. These are stories not only of success, but sometimes failure, not only of the peaks, but also the valleys. But tomorrow morning, you will all officially become Rice graduates, and it is Rice graduates who can lead, who can make a difference, who can bring success and joy not only to themselves, but to others. And our world needs you. We hope in your journeys ahead, you will hold your rice values dear. These are to take responsibility both for yourselves and for the problems and injustices you see. To do all that you undertake with the utmost integrity. To participate in and contribute to your communities. And to pursue all these endeavors with the highest aspiration of excellence. That is what we have asked for you here and that is what we ask for you as you become alumni of Rice. So my advice to you is really not too much different from when you arrived. Seize your opportunities wisely. Pursue your passions, explore the world, remember birthdays, learn from others, take responsibility, be bold, and don't be an idiot. You have accomplished more than you now know. You are capable of even more than you might believe. We thank and congratulate you, the great class of 2015, and look forward with anticipation and confidence to the lives of impact that you will lead.